Today on College Football Live, the champ is here. Nick Saban's going to join us live to break down the film, showing us why Alabama is so good at what they do. Plus, the full day and the buzz from ACC Media Days is the next breakthrough quarterback in college football from the Atlantic Coast Conference. But first, we begin with the breaking news from Ohio State. Carlos Hyde, the report came in that the starting running back has been dismissed from the team. He had been discussed as a person of interest in an assault against a young woman this weekend. For the latest on this and also another happening with a star Buckeye player, let's bring in Austin Ward from ESPN.com's Buckeye Nation. And Austin, what do you know about the circumstances surrounding Hyde's dismissal? Well, at this point, you know, Carlos Hyde it continues to only be uh, listed as a person of interest for an incident that happened at a Columbus bar. Um, just before 2 o'clock on Saturday morning, he has not been confirmed as dismissed by Ohio State. He's not been charged by Columbus police uh, or arrested with anything at this point. But the Columbus dispatch has cited uh, sources saying that, you know, the starting running back for the Buckeyes has already been kicked off the team. There's some precedent for this. Uh, with Urban Meyer and the Buckeyes, uh, linebacker Storm Klein a year ago had an incident with uh, an alleged assault against a female. That is a big no-no in a Urban Meyer's core values. Uh, so he's responded quickly uh, and swiftly Take that, Will to the transgressions <laughs> of that. In this case, uh, that would fit in with the precedent Meyer has already established. But again, uh, Ohio State has not commented on this issue at all as it relates to Hyde, and he has not yet been charged with the crime. Austin, also a report this weekend concerning Ohio State's All-America candidate at cornerback Bradley Roby. What can you tell us there? Yeah, Roby has been charged with a crime. He was uh, arrested at a bar over the weekend in Indiana. Uh, he struck a security guard there. There's also been no, uh, no confirmation from Ohio State of any pending discipline for Roby. Uh, comparing the two, it seems likely that, that his penalty would be far lighter. Uh, than a possible dismissal, um, but uh, when you look over, over the course of the weekend, these are two starters for Ohio State, a team that has national title aspirations, and uh, both put themselves in situations where uh, the law has taken an interest, and in Roby's case, he has actually already been arrested and had a, uh, an appearance in court this afternoon in Indiana. Austin Ward from ESPN.com's Buckeye Nation. All right, Jesse Palmer, let's talk about the running back depth situation now at Ohio State. Uh, high nearly 1,000 yards season a year ago. Rod Smith averaged 6.7 yards per carry, 6'3", 238. He's got some size. Jordan Hall's back from injury, and Briante Dunn, five-star recruit, who one of the guys that Urban immediately reached out to when he got the job there. This is a big blow for Ohio State. You know, after going undefeated last year, a lot of people expected them to compete for a national championship this year, and I still think they can, but they lose a giant piece of the offensive puzzle if Carlos Hyde is not in the backfield. After taking over last year for an injured Jordan Hall, he averaged 97 yards a game, ran for 16 touchdowns. He was a great complement to quarterback Braxton Miller in the misdirection running game. Do that in zone reads in the option game. He was excellent in the short yards and roll line, and he brought a physical presence to this offense. 235 pounds running a sub-4 540. Now, I think the good news for Ohio State moving forward, you have one of the best running backs in the country playing quarterback in Braxton Miller. Jordan Hall, we know, is an outstanding dynamic playmaker in that Percy Harvin hybrid role running back wide receiver. And they have big running backs in their stable. You mentioned Rod Smith, Briante Dunn, two guys that are at least six feet tall, 222 pounds. Urban Meyer has a tremendous track record in year two throughout his collegiate head coaching career. 34 and 4 in year two. Winning a national title, Florida in 06, undefeated season in Utah. Expectations should still be high in Columbus, but it just got a lot tougher if Carlos I is in the back. And we will have continuing coverage of the things going on in Ohio State right here on College Football Live. All right. So you just heard from you know the latest news as far as today goes, that being July 22nd on a Monday. And uh, let's just verify that. Going into talk radio version of the OMSR, I am your host, Will, the alternative being Sports Thrill. I am keeping track of my days and dates. Thank goodness. Okay, so in part one, this is uh, the baseline show. We always do a talk radio bit at the end. You've seen messages of 4.0 where 
working out the bugs here, I we mostly I few we's here and there of uh, working out the bugs in terms of taking the best parts of Gen 3.0 and putting it into 4.0. And part of that is you get the cool little musical intro, boom, right into the sports clip, boom, right into the post event talk radio, talk show. So there's going to be some elements of, of all of that coming up when college football starts. Okay. Now, why do we bother to even do this? You know, I don't expect a whole lot of people to listen at this point. That's why I put the sporting clips first. Well, it's called the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Copyright Act. And basically, it covers, it gives you, as a producer, when you're needing to borrow others' content or want to, or if you do, we certainly rely on ESPN, by the way, all those highest courtesy of ESPN, the NCAA, copyright too as well, all the other original content, concept, copyright to the OMSR. But you can do that. The DMCA covers, you know, fair use standard, minimal use, and derivatives. And by minimal use, we mean minimal. You know, that's what we do at the OMSR. This was vetted out and a cost-benefit ratio analysis performed, a feasibility study performed, and it's because of this that the OMSR has been able to exist. Because we, I've always preached this statute, even back at Gen 1, which I took down and started over. Right, because so, I sort of got carried away there. Didn't follow my own rules, or the rules. It's not just my rules, it's the way it is. And, and like that. So, you see a 12 minute video, and actually I'm trying to keep these to 10 or less. It's not 10 minutes of a sports clip. I mean, the Good Ship Sports Clip Lollipop in that regard has sailed. YouTube's gotten way better at uh, allowing third-party content ID to sort of nip you in the bud if you go beyond that five, six minute mark, all right? That's all I'm saying. So save the comments for the actual sport event we're able to bring. Because it's so beats your 30 second or a minute 15 bit clips that run around all over YouTube. They're within the confines of the DMCA as well, but they're just kind of rolling it up there to for their 50 minutes of fame, they being other YouTube users or slash competitors. This is a bona fide, cohesive production that we try to put on for you. So remember, if you want to get involved vis-a-vis -vis comments at the end of the show here, uh, be respectful to your fellow tubers and the show. No flip comments allowed, period. Clearly says that in the description. And of course, uh, being the only rodeo in town with a couple cool catchphrases, one of which looking out for your well being, reminding you that alcohol and sports, they are joined at the hip. So leave the keys in the cabinet. They're for no silly DUIs while you're out there. Later days, more signature plays. Oh,